we ended with malleability, correct? Impact, strength. The ability to resist fracturing upon an impact load. The ability to resist fracturing upon an impact load. They test that with that big pendulum thing that we have out there called a Sharpie V-notch impact tester, right? And there is no safer piece of equipment on earth, right? They're very dangerous. I used to ratchet it and band it because people would put all kinds of crazy stuff in it. A Sharpie, a piece of wood, pencil pen, Sharpie. Does it pop right up? Nope. There it is. So they put, that was a super zoomed in specimen. This pendulum goes up here, you put the specimen down here, it goes down there, hits the specimen, measures in foot pounds, the resistance to break on impact. It's a toughness test. And they put a little notch in the specimen to induce cracking. Then they look at things like um, cast iron will be really smooth break. Regular low carbon steel will have a little bit of a stretch to it. Aluminum, the same thing. They don't have a real machine here. Let's go, I want to see a real live machine. There's one. You gotta remember that's big and heavy, very dangerous. And no, I don't trust any of you to use it, so. Fracture toughness. Is a generic term. For measures. Resistance to extension of a crack. So once you have a crack, is it going to resist continuing to crack? There could be a lot of factors involved in that, right? Anybody ever get a crack in the windshield that starts off like that big? And then by the end of the winter, it goes all the way across your windshield and you can't pass one of New York State's sweet inspections. No. So you're absolutely, you know, I'm right and dirty. I'm on if someone though if you crack your windshield. I can show you a good video on that for how I'm on the Excellent. <laughs> when you uh, get a crack in a piece of steel and they want you to fix it, right? That will continue to crack unless you drill it out at the very end of the crack. You actually want to go past the crack a little bit, drill it out, and then it takes your stress and makes it circular rather than linear and it resists making that crack go further. Fracture toughness is a generic term for measures of resistance to extension of crack. Moving on. Fatigue. I am fatigued because I went to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't really. I actually went to bed at 8, and I think that's why I'm tired today, because I got too much sleep. You know, you get too much sleep, and then you're just yeah, no good. Until you hit that five-hour energy, and then it just boosts your head up. Is that what you did this morning? No, I have not. Fatigue. 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 Fatigue is one parts are subjected to repeated loading. This is a real dangerous one. Cycles, right? What does a cycle do to something? 
Think about a bridge. You drive cars over it every day, right? How many times can you drive a big car over that or a semi without having a fatigue failure, right? I remember what the other one was where we were going to play Blame the Engineer. Remember the um, carnival ride that blew up in uh, Ohio, like, that well, was probably like five years ago now, when the guy went flying off and died? That was a fatigue failure. So they did their regular inspections of that ride every day, but it was a fatigue failure. It happened instantly. It was a catastrophic failure, right? And that's because of fatigue. That thing was spinning all the time, vibration, and eventually it just broke. Lost it, lost it, fatigue failure. Parts can fail well below their yield strength with no sign of plastic deformation. So parts can fail well below their yield strength No sign of plastic deformation. When this happens, it is called fatigue failure. It's catastrophic, it happens instantly. close to instantly, right? You don't see it starting to break, and then all of a sudden, you're on a Ferris wheel and you go flying. That was not very sympathetic to the situation. People get injured when fatigue failures happen, or even worse, death, right? So you gotta do a lot of fatigue testing when you're doing something like a carnivore ride that's constantly under vibration and constantly moving parts and things like that under constant impacts, things like that. Fatigue. Limit. The maximum load in PSI PSI that can be applied an infinite number of times without causing failure. If I hit this desk like this, what is the maximum PSI can do that with a, without having a failure at some point? And they do have testers for this. So they have a fatigue test. Fatigue testing machine. That looks like the one we got. It's only a thousand bucks. That's the exact one we got. See how it's 80s puke green? The specimen kind of looks like a tinsel pole, I guess. I'm looking to see if there's a price, but. $35,000. Yeah, that, was, that had some weird denomination next to it, so I don't know. Could have been in. What does that? What does Europe have? Euros. Euros. How's a euro? I don't know what a euro is. Pounds. Pounds. Yeah, whatever. Fatigue limit. Stress critical. Areas in test specimens that are integral in the testing. So it's areas in the test specimen that are 
integral in the testing principle that would be the middle part, right? The next thing is elastic limit. Didn't we have that on the other side? We did. So I guess I'll skip that. Pre. Continuing slow plastic flow at a stress below the elastic limit. Street light, right? On that cable that's holding it up. Slow ball. You know, it eventually lead to fatigue. I'm trying to think of a good one that would break, but I can't think of anything. Potential test question. What is a continuing slow plastic flow of stress below the elastic limit? You're gonna write great. And you have to say it like that too. Coefficient. Oh wait, thermal expansion. In almost all cases, solids become larger when heated and shrink when cooled. With the exception of water or whatever the chemistry teacher told me the other one was. I'm sure there's more than, maybe there's not more than two, I don't know. You can use this phenomenon. Again, I can't say that word. I don't know what I'm always trying to say when I can't say it, but I do. You can use this. It's, it's, it's a useful thing to know, right? If your shrink fits. If you have a nut or a bolt that you can't get out. You heat it up, expand the nut, comes right off, right? Thermal expansion and contraction. Coefficients. Of thermal Expansion. They go over this in chemistry, right? So they go over the first half there? What? They go I only, over the first half? I only did half of it. I know, they do it in the first half? Uh, no, I did No. <laughs> Coefficient of thermal expansion. Apparently it was not in the first half of chemistry. I don't know. The rate at which thermal expansion occurs. per degree Fahrenheit. <laughs> and if you spell Fahrenheit right on the test, you get an extra point. That's legit.
when they solidify. And that's all I have to say about that. And then for some reason, they put superconducting metals in here at the end of this chapter, which electrical flow or resistance, whatever you want to call it, of a metal is a property. It's not like a mechanical property. It's an electric property. Superconducting metals. Not perfect conductors of electricity, but are very good they are silver, copper, and aluminum. I think of superconducting metals, I would have thought of gold and, you know, probably gold, platinum, silver. Copper and aluminum were pretty good. They grouped silver in there, too. I guess that's the one I wouldn't have thought would have been in there, but. Copper's good, but it's heavy, right? Aluminum's light, but it doesn't conduct quite as good as, as aluminum, so, or, yeah, copper. But it's cheaper too. Anybody cheap in here? Anybody want to admit it? You're cheap? When it comes to tires, you wear them right down to the wires, right? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get my tires to come off. I might just have the power brake in the intersection and get it done. I got brand new tires sitting in my bar. And I don't everybody's like, why don't you put those on? It's cheap when it comes to tires. I remember in the middle of the street somewhere and say, tires go flat. There you go. Anyways, aluminum's cheap. So they use aluminum with like windings and things now. So we are going to have a quiz. Next class, on the last two days of notes, where's my explanation? There it is. Boom. We need to do something to make it stand out. Do I dare italicize it? And underline it. Ooh. We're going to take a look at three catastrophic failures now, and we're going to either blame the engineer or not blame the engineer. The first one is going to be the Twin Towers, Galloping Gertie, and then that amusement park ride, where all these mechanical properties were in stress, right? And thermal. We're talking about one of them. And we're either going to blame the engineer and throw them under the bus, or we're going to give them a pass. For the online course, I will put the videos we watch in the course description. Of course, the video description.